Worthington from the ANU. Um, I have, last week I was giving a talk at a conference in Melbourne, and I think I was up to plan C when my laptop crashed shortly before the, my presentation. My ISP website went down, and I was down to the copy of the thing on a little card in my mobile phone, which fortunately worked. But um, now the question is, are these notes here somewhere? Where are they? Technology, I think we're talking about. Very good. Let me just make it a bit bigger. Now, I feel a bit of a fraud standing here because um, CIT knows much more about how to do all this technology stuff than people at universities do. It's one of the dirty little secrets of education. But anyway, um, I've just prepared a few slides which are on a web page which should turn into a slide with a bit of cascading style sheet magic. <coughs> That'll do. Um, that's from when I was at a TED talk in Canberra. I wasn't on the stage, I was just directing people into the room. But still, it was fun being there. Um, You've seen a diff few different versions of how to do videos to put online to give to people. I just wanted to point out a couple of things about how to make them work faster. Whatever particular technology you're doing and how you're doing it. If I had my laptop running, I could demonstrate it. I use Linux because I'm in the computer science department rather than Microsoft Windows. But the principle's the same whether you've got <coughs> Apple's or Macs or whatever. So you have a little program that lets you record a screencast, so it records whatever's on your computer screen. You plug in a microphone. Now, I use one of these USB ones, which I only got because I won it in a competition. <laughs> so look for the ones with the USB plug on it, because it digitizes the audio in the device, and you get better quality sound in the system. And the other thing is, it's a good idea to use a lapel microphone or a headset because the microphone is then next to your mouth, not where the computer is. If you use the one in the computer, you'll end up with whizzing, buzzing and noises. So it works a lot better like this. Um, when I'm not being seen, I wear the headset for this, uh, but I look a bit of a dwarf with it on. So I have another squ secret squirrel one where uh, it looks, clips on the lapel and there's a thing in the ear and it runs down the back for video conferences, which is, you can get from the electronic shop. But the audio makes all the difference. People talk about video. Pete, uh, do you have a question there, yes. oh, just, just a quick question while we're up to it. Do they have Wi-Fi versions of that so you can move around? Uh, they're generally Bluetooth. Right. Um, but they work? Well. Yes, you can use a wireless. You can even use the sort that goes with your telephone with your computer. Uh, you can buy multiple microphones if you want to do a sort of a video conference sort of thing. I suggest if you're doing video presentation to use one with cable uh, because people tend to wander out of where the camera is and if it's got a cable they're tethered. <laughs> <laughs> so they can't wander too far. I was thinking of well, I'd end up crashing the computer on the floor. <laughs> well in that case maybe you need to tie the cable <laughs> Have, and don't use a chair with wheels on it because you'll wander off. Um, but so you record it. Uh, and then, depending on software, you might have to convert it to the format for whatever you're using it for. So I use a free thing called Record My Desktop, and then I use a free thing called WinFF, which converts it to the format that YouTube can use. Um, and you have to fiddle around with trying different formats for it all. I actually trained to do video production for education at CIT about 10 years ago, um, back in the analog days in fact, it must have been more than 10 years ago. The principles of how you do video really haven't changed even though it's all digital now. Um, the video resolution keeps increasing <coughs> and people are now getting high definition TVs and there are high definition screens so at somewhere between um, 1280 by 720 pixels to 1920 by 1080 is probably rare things are at the moment. 
because those TVs and screens are getting cheaper, the manufacturers want to go to much, much higher resolution just so we'll have to throw all the gear out by new things. But that will give you a sort of clear sort of picture on the current screens. Don't worry too much what this progressive means, but you don't want interlace. This is the P on the end is important. But um, generally you'll record your screen at the resolution it is, and that'll be okay. If you, in your software, it has a setting for frame, frames per second, that is the thing I suggest you change. If you're doing screencasts of slides like this, there's no point in recording them at 24 frames a second because they don't change. And if you're waving the mouse around, it doesn't move very fast. My little computer has trouble keeping up with the video recording. And so I set it down to one frame per second. And it's a lot happier when it's recording it all. When you upload it to something like YouTube, they may well then expand it into frames, but it still works pretty well. But you'll end up with something that's maybe a quarter the size of the file to store on the server, a quarter size that the student would then have to download. The main thing is to have the big resolution and also the good quality audio. Um, an example of this stuff, at the ANU, they have a bespoke digital lecture delivery system. Um, when I checked quite a while ago, it was recording audio at 0.2 of a megabyte per minute. Um, it had a sort of a podcast format for little screens at five frames per second, which recorded at one megabyte per minute. And then it had a sort of big screen, two frames per second, at 3.5 megabytes per minute. So keep in mind, this is megabytes a minute being recorded. If your students only have a small bandwidth, low allocation, whatever, um, and you've recorded it 20 times that size, it's going to chew up things for them. Make it hard if they've got an old, slow computer. Um, but your system is probably, when you record from your own screen in a lecture theatre, <coughs> that'll all be set up for you. This is only if you're recording it yourself on your own computer, you have to worry about these settings. Um, the little picture here is actually from a video, which I wonder if it's working. Um, the point here is to convey information in a video animated format, you do not necessarily need real pictures. So we talked about drawings on screens. This whole video, which won an award uh, for the producer, just can't see his name there anywhere. I hope it comes up here. Ian Anderson is entirely made out of the little signs you see at airports. And it's a story of someone catching a plane. They're waiting now. So these are international standard pictograms. And I use some of these in slide presentations and things like that make a point about things. Um, and the byproduct is this is technically very efficient because it's only a cartoon in effect. It's now taking off. It's a bit sexist there, the um, cabin crew were female, all the passengers, I think, are male. Um, what was the there's a comment up there. Oh, dresses don't work side on the cartoon. Dresses? Oh, yeah, you couldn't, you couldn't yeah, have a female side. You couldn't tell the difference. Dresses don't work. In profile, no. Right. 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 Okay. Sorry. <laughs> That's a subtlety I'm not quite familiar with. <laughs> but anyway, he's going through customs. Down the, down the thing, out the door getting on the bus, and so on. Um, people spend a lot of time trying to find interesting jazzy photographs to put in things to illustrate things. I just look through all the people around all the A happy ending. <laughs> so that's a simple example. The, other, the one other little thing I wanted to say was just remember uh, accessibility. Um, you can't just give people 
uh, pictures and audio, you have to allow for people who can't see pictures and audio in most cases. Uh, so you need to consider captions on it or the, making sure the written notes match roughly the video version of this thing and so on. And this is not optional, this is the law. And I helped make that law uh, in the so-called case in 2003. That's about all I wanted to say. Um, I thought I'd take some questions. I actually, at the moment, have to confess, in my current course at the ANU, I am using mostly text and only videos I can scrounge off the internet. I'm going to try and start using more of my captured video now that I've got a fair idea of how to do it well. And I use the process where I say to the students, read these age page, read the reading, we'll ask some questions, and then we'll discuss them. And use the assessment part of it to um, encourage them to do it. By, when they say, well, why do I need to do this? And I say, well, you don't have to do it, but you'll fail if you don't. Which tends to work, and every, every week they have to do something. But where there are videos available, they appreciate it. And also, it's amazing how a little photograph of you and some sound appears to be a real person, even though it's coming out of the computer. And the students relate to that sort of thing. That's about all I have to say. Thanks, Tom. Well, Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you.